This special NFL Draft edition of Hey Fightin' Podcast, Road to the Pros, is brought to you by Community Coffee, bringing people together over great tasting coffee for over four generations. Discover your favorite blend at your local grocery store or visit us at communitycoffee.com. All right, good to sit down with Tyler Shelvin. Tyler, welcome to Hey Fightin' Podcast. Welcome to LSU LSU Pro Day. Uh, Big day for you. I'll start where I started with Carrie, too, because you had a similar experience. Um... You, you had a decision to make last year before the season started to decide if you wanted to play. And Kerry brought up a very interesting a very interesting point that I didn't even consider, but at that point you didn't even know if there was going to be a season. It was it was all kind of up in the air. So take me back to that moment and, and more, more the process, right? Because I think us as fans or media, whoever, we all see the results. We all see Tyler Shelvin opted out, didn't play. But I don't think anyone understands the process, really, unless you've been through it. So take us through there. What's the process like when you're trying to make a decision of that magnitude? Um, it was a very hard decision, honestly, uh, coming off a national championship and um, going straight into COVID protocols. So, I mean, through that process, we was on our own sometimes. So it was a lot of thinking going on in all of our heads, honestly. So, I mean, I took it upon myself to opt out to better myself, to get, uh, I mean, prepare for the next level and just – become a, a, a pro athlete. So, I mean, I opted out. Um, I stayed in Baton Rouge, focused on myself, uh, tried to get my head right. But the reason I opted out was, I mean, COVID really, it really messed up everything. It was a big question mark. So the decision I made was a self-decision, 100% mine. Um, my mom and dad backed me up on it. So, I mean, I opted out, immediately started training, uh, went with Ryan Clark, stayed there. And then October came around, I moved to Dallas. So it's an interesting process because a lot of guys, they finish their, their college careers, they jump straight into draft prep, and they've got like three, four months of just grind, 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 grind to get ready. COVID did mess everything up. I, I think we all agree with that. It did present some, I don't even know if you would call them opportunities, but it, there's, there's always a positive side to a negative, and it gave you a little more time, right, to get into that process, to figure out what you needed to work on. So what was that process like? Was it... I'm going to take a, a little time off, get my body right, and then dive into it. Was I'm going to dive into it head full speed ahead and start working on stuff? Like, how, how did you transition from the day that you put you packed up your locker and your, your, you moved on from LSU, your LSU career, um, to now I'm preparing for the draft? What was that process like? Um, it was a slight process for me. Um, at the beginning, I sat down, made my plans, looked at my pros and cons, and looked what I really needed to work on. So, I mean, I immediately started working on my cons, you know, I started getting my body right, my condition right, my health right, any nicks or bruises, and uh, I just went along with that. And then as the months start going and winding down, I really looked at my pros, okay, what I need to better at. Hmm. Okay, I'm good at this. I'm going to just keep continuing doing what I'm doing and get better at it. Self-evaluation is obviously a huge part of what y'all are doing at this time. Who are the people helping you with that? Because obviously you are going to take a hard look at yourself, but you're going to rely on mentors or agents or whoever's invested in your success to help you with that. So who are the people that helped you, and what was just kind of their feedback as you worked on yourself? Uh, yeah, it really started with myself, yeah. honestly, uh, knowing what I needed to do, but it started with my agent and Brent Calloway at Exos in Frisco, Texas. Um, we all sat down, we all had a game plan, and I adapted to it and I executed it. So that that work has been done, and you're—I mean, you're you're still working, but you've gotten to where you want to be for pro day for tomorrow. What was the biggest thing you worked on? Was it getting in the best shape you could be? Was it getting as strong as you could be? What were the the, the primary focuses? And then kind of take me, give me some numbers. Where'd you start at? Where'd you end up? And and where do you? How do you feel about just your, your physical? Because your physical condition. Because tomorrow, that's what it's all about, right? It's the right. physical performance. Show us what right. you can do physically. So, talk about the growth you've made there. Um, I mean, the growth that I pushed myself through over the time that I opted out is working on my work ethic and also my condition and weight. I mean, before I, uh, I left LSU, I was at least like 365. Hmm. Uh, I'm not going to tell you at the weight I'm at now because it's a big surprise. Nobody expected me oh, wow. to do it. So, yeah. I mean, it was a lot of, like I said, self-evaluation, what I needed to work on and better myself at, and not just for other people. How many people know what your weight is right now? Know the surprise? Handful. Okay, because what I was going to do is I was going to say this doesn't air until after yeah. tomorrow, so you could tell us now, but if only a handful know, that's privileged information. I'll lean on it there. But what did you do? What was the process to get in the best shape of your life? Was it running a bunch? Was it eating better? Was it 
hitting the weight room? Like, how do you, how did you make that physical transformation? Um, it's just being smart, uh, doing nutrition, um, also extra cardio, things like that, the small things, but also getting the work that Brent Calloway put me through. Hmm. And, uh, I mean, just watching what I do and how I do it, that goes back to my work ethic, how hard am I pushing myself and I'm finishing through the line or I'm giving up before the line. So I learned how to finish through the line and even give more. So it's more complicated than no rice in your gumbo, which is the famous Coach O saying. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. Um, all right, let's 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 play a game here. I'm an NFL GM. Okay, I'm interviewing you, and I'm saying, Tyler, look, I need to I need to anchor on my defensive line for the next ten years. We're looking at this guy. We're looking at that guy. I'm talking to you now. Why should I take you? What are you going to bring to my franchise that's going to make us a championship franchise? First off, I'll bring you what you want. I mean, if you want nothing to run up the middle, I, I could easily do that. Um, also work on my pass game. Uh, at the IPOL season, I mean, me and uh, Brandon Tucker at EXOs, we uh, worked on my pass rush, learned how to get off, how to execute, uh, learn how to be a, a burst guy. So, I mean, I worked on my pass rush. Uh, run game, that's easy. That's all over film. And I can execute what you want done. All right, I'm going to play another game with you. We play with all these guys. So you can look up there. You can see all the faces of all the guys going through Pro Day tomorrow. I want you to start on the left with Tori, work your way down to Zach. You can skip over yourself, or you can talk <laughs> about yourself if you want to. But you're going to, you're going to build the model prospect for me, okay, the best NFL prospect imaginable, round one, pick one, with one characteristic from each of those guys. So start with Tori, work your way down. Build me that guy by picking a, a characteristic from each guy. All right, uh, Tory, hard hit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point. Jamar, oh man, he's he's a big question mark because um, he got all kind of moves. That's what, that's what everyone says. <laughs> Everyone's like, J how do you pick one from Jamar? Uh, Jabril, quiet, smart. Uh, Terrence, goofy. Uh, Ray, what did I say about Ray? Ray, quiet, but he funny. Yeah. Uh, skip me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jacoby, he's a hard head, but he's real smart. Yep. Care, he talked too much. <laughs> and Vine, Vine, uh, yeah, he he's everything. I mean, <laughs> everything. I love he's it. Smart. You you were the uh, the most honest of everybody. Everybody else was talking nice about everybody. You're just cutting straight to the point. I like oh, yeah. that. Hey, what do you? We'll wrap up here. What do you take away from this place? You you spent a couple of years here. You walk away with a national champion. You set yourself up for the next step in your career. When you look back on your time at LSU and what LSU's meant to you and the memories that stand out and how you developed as a player and a person, what are you going to take away from this experience? It's family orientated. I mean, everybody get along with everybody. I mean, everybody close. And I mean, when we step on the field from offense to defense, to special team, it's one big family, and we go out there and fight for each other. It's like a big war, and we're going to war with each other. So I mean, we're at LSU. There's one thing you learn is how to be a unit. Absolutely. One team, one heartbeat. Tyler, appreciate your time, man. Thank you. Oh, yes, I appreciate you.